Welcome to Public Speaking, a course that discusses what we call speak right. Speak right is a concept that I developed over time that helps any individual anywhere be able to write well so they can speak better. In all of human history, one of the biggest challenges has always been the ability to communicate our messages. Communication is unique to human beings in terms of verbal communication. We use languages, we use verbs, we use different tones to be able to communicate and express ourselves in the right ways. In our world today, as times have changed and things have advanced, we need more communication, better communication, and most importantly, we need shorter communication. Your ability to convey your message quickly is going to be the most effective thing that you can do. Speak right will help you advance that ability. Today we're going to be discussing some of the basic elements of speaking right. One of the things that you want to do as you begin to prepare to speak is think about the audience. Who am I going to be talking to? Once you know the audience, then everything else can fall into place very easily. So we're going to be discussing the audience, the messaging that follows, and how to captivate your audience and have them walk away with a few concepts that you discussed. The first thing you want to do is write down your thoughts. You write down your thoughts with the audience in mind. The second thing you want to do is write down the punchline. What is it that you want them to walk away with? Think about the one thing that you want to stick out in their minds. If they were to be asked, what did you learn today? Or what did the speaker talk about? What is it that they will say? Once you've discovered that one thing, then you can build everything around that one message. A lot of times that becomes the title of your message. A lot of times that also becomes the point that you repeat over and over and over. There's a concept called the seven-factor phrase. Seven-factor phrase is used a lot in a lot of professional speaking. And what it simply means is that you repeat one thing seven times throughout your message. The human mind is wired to remember something that's said over and over. Now, traditionally, we're told you got to say something three times. Realistically and psychologically, you have to say it seven times before people can remember it. So what's your seven factor phrase? And where are you gonna place it in order to be able to repeat it five, six, seven times or more? The final thing you wanna consider when you're jotting down your notes is your conclusion. Most people remember the beginning and the ending. What's in the middle a lot of times is halfway lost but people will commit it to deeper memory. So you want to have a good starting point and you want to have an excellent ending. The ending does not have to be a repetition of your main thoughts. The ending can be classic and well done by simply giving your punchline and ending with your seven factor phrase. Here's an example. We're going to do a speech about the rabbits. My audience is a group of rabbit keepers. And the seven factor phrase I want them to remember is let rabbits live. Here's how it goes. The rabbit walked out of the door early in the morning, looking for some shade, looking for some water and looking for some food. As he walked down the street, he noticed that his neighbor rabbit had not woken up yet. He snuck slowly into his rabbit hatch and tried to figure out, was he awake? Was he just running late? As he drew closer, he noticed an eerie silence in the neighbor's rabbit hatch. And as he got very close, he could clearly see that the rabbits were all missing. Not only were they missing, but there was evidence that they were completely gone. Not moved away, but gone. 
Were they victims of a predator? Or had they been taken away by some alien force? He wondered. He thought to himself, there are many people that are out here to get us. There are many people that are out here to destroy our lives. And he thought to himself, how can we allow them to find what they need and let the rabbits live? So as he ran and scurried across the yard, the thoughts were in his mind regarding this statement. How can we give them what they need so they can let the rabbits live? This thought almost haunted him for the rest of the day. And as he continued to think about the concept, he began to come up with ideas on ways to provide alternatives for all these predators and all these people that are looking to use them as their dinner or use them as some type of pet. As the day went by, the thoughts were heavy and huge in his mind and he went on to think through one ideal idea it was that aha moment and he realized that if we can provide what they need every single day then over time they will let the rabbits live but what is it that they need what is it that they want from us how can we provide another animal's meat? That's almost impossible. How can we provide something that replaces us and also causes them to be satisfied? The thoughts were many. The ideas were not short, uh, short in number. But he was able to come up with a brilliant solution where the community pulled together and every single day, one of the families would provide meat for the predators. They would put it right at the edge of the community so that when the predators would come in, they would find what they need and scurry away and they would let the rabbits live. At the end of the day, what they discovered is that not only do they need to provide what the predators need, but they also need to start getting to know the predators. And as time went by, they provided the meat and let the predators see that it came from them. They built a relationship and out of the relationship grew respect. And out of respect, the predators were able to let the rabbits live. So today, as we discuss this concept, what is it that you're going to do to let the rabbits in your life live? What is it that you're going to do in order to create community, to attack a certain issue, and also to build bridges and build relationships so that the rabbits, proverbial rabbits in your life, can live. Let the rabbits live so that community can be created, community can grow deeper, and let the rabbits live so that everyone in the community can find some connection to one another and realize that they need one another. Thank you. That's an example of a short speech. It took about five minutes to develop, but as you noticed, as I went through it, I had a seven factor phrase included. Now that was impromptu and random. And that's sometimes the best way to create a message. You want to make sure that the main point remains the main point, And the main point is always going to bring you back to what you need to say. When you write well, you can speak better. So we want you to develop a habit of jotting down your thoughts and writing well so that your speech comes out fluently, fluidly, and it represents exactly what you desire to say. We're going to leave you with three concepts today. Number one, you want to write well. Jot down your thoughts before you begin to speak. Number two, you want to speak fluidly. Make sure that you're speaking from what you've written. And number three, you want to end well. Make sure that your ending is as powerful as your starting, if not more powerful. When you do these three things on a regular basis, 
it's going to become second nature before you know it. Then you'll be able to say, I'm speak writing because I'm writing well so I can speak better. All the best as you pursue all your speaking and all the best as you apply all your writing. Thank you.